I cracked the code to perfectly gluing your tech house kick and bass every single time. And I call this method the parallel compression suite. So if you ever wondered how do professional music producers get such a tight, powerful and punchy and clean low end that sounds literally everywhere in a studio, in a car, uh, on your home system, this is exactly the method that I'm going to teach you that will help you to achieve this sound. And you can use it for any track. And let me just show you two examples to here before and after. So first example is going to be before. And now after the processing and rebuilding the low end. Really massive difference and I'll show you exactly what I did. We'll talk about the sound selection, the processing, the dynamics and all that stuff. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Vlad and I create superstar music producers. If you need some help with your music, check the links down below. I do coaching. So just feel free to book a call with me and I would love to have a conversation about your music and help you. And without further talking, let's get started with this video. First thing I want to talk about is common low end mixing problems that probably 99% of music producers have. So number one is going to be weak sound selection, number two, too long or too short kick bass, over process sound, bad balance, squash dynamics and bad mix translation. So let's really quickly talk about these and I'll show you my method. So number one sound selection, this is the most important piece of the puzzle. Instead of trying to fix it with the processing, just replace the freaking sound. You will save yourself a lot of time and headache. So like this is exactly what you want to achieve in your music, right? Should be like two uh, pieces of puzzle that you just connect together and that clicks, right? So if you listen to my old mix, it's just, it just sounds off. Like it's I'm gonna show you one example here. So yeah, it's kind of okay, but I could replace the kick, I could process the bass a little bit differently. And let me show you the new version, same low end, I replaced the kick and just by replacing the sample, Listen to how much better this sounds. And all I did was just replacing the sample. We'll talk about the processing in a second. I mean, even without the EQ that I did here, it does change the sound a lot, but then again, those are not like rocket science, uh, some, uh, complicated things that I did, just basic EQing. And this is so much better, right? If you listen in the studio here, really nice, really deep. I love that. With this one, the kick and the bass are fighting for the space. So I don't want to talk too much. Make sure that you have proper sound selection. So if it's not working, like if the kick is not working, if the bass is not working, just replace that. And that's it. That's like all you need to do. Don't waste time on over processing because it's not going to help. Okay. Number two, uh, kick bass length. I'm going to really quickly talk about that. You want to avoid overlapping of your kick and the bass. This will make your mix sound muddy on a club system. It's either going to be long kick and short bass or long bass and short kick. That's all you need to know, right? And how do you know if the kick and bass are overlapping? I'm just going to show you. It's, it's really simple, right? So you can use uh, some oscilloscope. Oscilloscope's uh, LFO tool is also showing you the waveform. But let's analyze the kick and the bass real quick here. So that's the kick. That's the bass. Now with the kick. So I designed the kick in a way to uh, end exactly when the bass starts. It's actually pretty like audible when the kick is too long. I'm going to show you here, right? So let's do like this. 
and let's just make it super long. Right, so you can hear that the, ba uh, the kick is just like eating up the bass and quite often that's exactly the thing that is happening to your mixes, right? So be really careful with that, be really conscious about what you do. If you need some visual support, like you can use uh, plugins like this, oscilloscope. But it's like, you can, you can see how much louder the kick is. I'm not really a big fan of looking at, you know, numbers and stuff. I go by ear, uh, but uh, just by reducing the length, you, you can hear that, right? It's a big difference between like this and uh, let's say this. It's super long, so for this type of kick, you would need like a much shorter bass, so keep that in mind, right? So no kick bass overlapping, okay? And again, it's really easy to uh, understand when this is happening. So if we do, there's one more technique that you can do, right? So if you put a filter on your master channel and you just solo the low frequencies, right? So that's the, that's the long one. And if we go back, we do like this and play the kick in the bass. So usually if that's gonna be clean, that's okay. But as soon as we do, it just eats up the whole thing, okay? It's no kick bass overlapping. Number four, uh, number three, avoid over-processing. It's important to be able to convey the original idea without killing it with processing. Sometimes I destroyed my tracks with a lot of plugins because I thought I needed all that stuff, right? So you want to generally avoid using plugins just because somebody told you or just because it's like the normal thing to do. No, like nothing is normal. The context is what matters the most, right? You need to understand, does my track need this or not? If you look at the processing really that I have, um, we're gonna talk about my uh, parallel compression technique, but just look at this. I do have like saturation, multiband compression, uh, another compressor on my uh, on my kick and the bass group. And because of that, it's like, it's killing the dynamics. It doesn't sound that good. And you can really hear that it will be hard for the speaker to Although like it may seem like it's okay, but as soon as I take out the processing from the kick as well, you can really hear that I just selected wrong uh, sounds. They don't fit together. I mean, it's sort of okay. And with uh, the processing, I was just trying to, to solve the problem that almost didn't exist from the beginning, right? Does it actually make the sound much better? Yeah, sort of, but does this, does this like kick and bass sound really that good? No, the bass is interesting, but there's so much work uh, that needs to be done. Usually it's minor changes, right? So avoid over-processing. Try to stick with the original sounds, because like I realized this uh, lately, the more you process the sound, the less it sounds like the original idea, right? So then again, like the idea could be this, and then we <laughs> transition to something completely different, right? So even if I remove the processing, uh, I'm just gonna keep the EQ though, right? Let's remove this, let's remove this, compression. So now, no processing on the new kick in the bass. Is that really big of a difference? Actually, no, not that big of a difference. Right, with a bit of compression. And then with this one thing on the group. So it's not like it sounds totally different. We are just shaping it a little bit more, okay? So avoid over-processing. Uh, now let's talk about super, super important thing, 
bad balance. I never thought kick bass mixing is so easy when you get the balance right. Stop looking at the numbers. Use your ears to adjust the loudness uh, of your mix instead. Sometimes the kick and the bass will have the same levels. And for another mix, the kick needs to be louder, right? So in the mix too, the bass, like it's really massive and maybe like the kick is gonna be something like this, right? And then the mix one, it could be different dynamic, right? So again, there's no right or wrong. You just have to listen. So forget about the numbers, right? So let's just, let's just go here and um, let me adjust the levels. So usually I thought that I, like the kick needs to be plus 60 be louder than the bass. And I was like, doing compression, saturation, EQing just to compensate for that. But what is much easier is just reduce the loudness and like you don't need to compress that much, you don't need to do that much. So try keeping the original uh, signal, the original idea the way it is, right? So let's, let's try it with um, minus 12 and uh, minus six and just listen to how it sounds. You can already hear that the kick is overtaking, taking over uh, the balance, or like the dynamics, it just pushes the bass too much. And for the speaker, because sound waves are physical, they cannot play that. But once we reduce the loudness, let's say minus nine, that's a little bit too quiet, but you can solve so much just with, I think minus 9.5, right? And then again, if you make the bass too loud, you're, dest you're destroying the mix. So it's really all about Right, you can see how easy it is to get the balance right. So just use your ears and like really test what sounds good for your mix. I like this balance uh, for my uh, mix for this for this track. Right, so we do like. If I do, you can also hear how it like pushes and like it eats up the whole mix because there's so much energy in the kick and the bass. Okay, so uh, anything else? Bad mix translation. This one is gonna be real quick. This is usually the result of all mistakes that you did previously as they have a compound effect. Now I'm gonna give you the formula you can use for any track, okay? So let's talk about the parallel compression suite method. So I've been experimenting a lot with uh, mixing, a little bit with mastering as well, like sound design and all that stuff. And I simplified my approach uh, so much, so much that right now, like the way that the mixing looks, I can finish tracks like, like this, like left and right. So how do you, how, what it is, like wh what is it, what is it? So we have the dry signal, right? We have the parallel compression for punch, which is more aggressive. We have parallel compression for pump, which is soft and gluing. And we have uh, parallel uh, multi-band compression for tight or low end. And let me break down the, uh, the settings here and what I'm doing, right? So first of all, just listen to how it sounds. So we're peaking minus minus 20, right? And without this one. Again, not that big of a difference, but it's a little bit tighter because of that, it will be easier for the club system to play like the actual sound waves, right? So we have the dry signal here. I don't have anything on it. And by mixing, the dry signal, the pump, the punch on the low end, right? Like the different compressions uh, or like compressors, excuse me. You can achieve and you can really dial in the perfect low end balance. So if we do the dry, it's, it's really low because we still need the dry signal. Now let's talk about the, uh, the pump, right? I'll go one, one by one. Uh, also quick, mention why I'm choosing to use parallel compared to uh, just using that on your on your group. I noticed that like 
I was doing that just because I thought it was right. But then just listen to like, I have a lot of stuff on the group, saturation, multiband compressor, buzz compressor, and does it actually sound nice? Mm, like not really, not really. And in the, in the mix here, you can listen to the low end. It just taking over the, the whole thing, but the new mix, let's listen to the whole thing. It's of course a little bit too much low end here because you still need to compress a little bit on the master channel, but I hope um, it makes sense. Okay, so we're starting with the dry signal and then we have the pump compressor. So for the pump compressor, let me go through the specifics Mm, of that. So you want to have very, very slow attack and release for pumping and gluing sound because like the slower is the attack, the less you affect like the dynamics, right? If you, if the attack is really fast, then like you're making, you're pushing every, everything back. It's aggressive compression. We're going to use that. Uh, so medium ratio, it's about like 61 because it, it's slow. You can be a little bit more aggressive, but again, play with that. Uh, also, I'm using sidechain here, so compression starts only at uh, 175 hertz. Uh, very slow attack and very slow release. And about like minus six, again, I don't want to be like, give you any numbers, just listen. I felt like this is more or less uh, good, okay? And let's combine that with the dry signal. Because I already have my levels set up and then you just need to find the right the right balance. Maybe for your mix, you will do the dry like minus six and then you will mix a little bit of this like pump and punch. But just, uh, just listen to, to the compressed signal. You can do like very long. Something like that. Yeah, you want to have, uh, you want to dial in the right settings for your exact kick in the bass, right? So that's that, that's it. Again, like the logic is very slow attack, very slow release, uh, medium ratio. I mean, for this kind of compression, like it's not like super heavy, like still for, Four is considered like a buzz uh, compression, like a normal standard, right? I just want to compress a little, a little bit more to make it tighter. So that's that's the whole logic, right? And then depending on the compressor that you use, you can play with different parameters. Okay, next thing, uh, punch compressor. So punch compressor is uh, a little bit uh, different. Uh, we are trying to bring up the quieter parts of the signal. Right, so again, same settings, but fast attack, fast release, medium gain reduction, bit smaller ratio because this one is a bit more aggressive. So maybe like two to one, three to one, four to one. And, the, and again, same thing, compression starts at 175 Hertz here. All right, so let's go here and let's uh, solo. Listen to the signal. Wait, uh, it should be this one. Yeah, this one, uh, listen to the signal here. It's aggressive. You can do a shorter one as well, so. 62. I think like this is good. If I do too much of a ratio, I think actually it's not bad, maybe like five and something. Something like that, right? And then you just need to mix that to the original signal. But that's, but that's the whole logic. So fast attack, fast release. So this is gonna be the punch compressor. The previous was pump one, a little bit different. And then we have the final multi-band compression for tight low end. So here, the goal is to uh, compress it uh, like a lot, right? So let's compress, uh, excuse me, not, not compress, I'm just gonna show you. Let's do 
something like this, right? Some heavy compression here. So the goal here is to make it really, really tight and then mix that signal to the original sound, right? And once we do that, so let's do the, we need to reach like minus 20. So here was minus six, uh, that one was minus, uh, I think, uh, minus nine or something like that. And that was like minus 12 or something like that. And then you can play with the settings a little bit, right? So maybe it's too much of a punch. Right, and without this one, not a big of a difference, right? So we are still keeping the original signal, and that's the reason why we do this in parallel. Because in parallel, you are not um, you're not fucking up with the phase and stuff like. I'm not like a professional mastering engineer. I don't know about the uh, like this this theory and stuff, but uh, just from what I hear, it sounds much better in parallel right so that's that's the whole thing that's the whole logic and that's how you can glue any kick and a bass together right so that's the whole thing and uh yeah let's listen to the track one more time uh to yeah listen to what we have right let's listen to this track <laughs> Listen to the previous one. The low end is much more boomy and uh, unbalanced. Okay, so yeah, uh, all you really need to do is to understand the logic. So the pump compressor, the punch compressor, the low end compressor, like multi band for really tight low end, and then you just need to balance them properly, and that's it. All right, I hope you got some value from this video. And uh, yeah, if you need some help with your music, just let me know. Uh, feel free to book a call and see you in the next one. Bye.